All right, so we have to write a function that prints all possible combinations of n different digits in ascending order. n is major than zero and minor than 10. Here we get an example for n is equal to three. We get zero, one, two, comma, space. Then of course the other configuration, zero, one, three, comma, space, and so on until we reach the final uh, configuration, which is seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Okay, to solve these kind of problems, recursion backtracking is by far the best thing in my opinion because with a simple concise piece of code you get the solution i made an entire video in which i try to explain backtracking in simple words in this video i will go uh, a little faster and implement uh, this backtracking uh, first of all i'm gonna do uh, a simpler version namely i'm gonna implement a function uh, binary that is gonna be able to print all the binary configurations of n bits for example 8 bits 1 bytes i need all the configurations from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1111 so 256 patterns configurations okay let's do a binary.c and here i will have my binary let's say 4 for the sake of argument so basically this function has to be able to print 0000, 0, 0, 0 to 1111 all the configurations from 000 to 111. Let's say that this function is able to print all the configuration till 64 bits. Okay. All right. Let's implement the function with void bin int uh, bits. Okay. So I want a buffer that is uh, big enough to host all the possible uh, configurations till 64 bits. So I need a buffer which is big 65, right? Charts, of course. So let's do char s 65 like that. So inside this boy, I will have all the chars with the specific patterns. Okay. And then I'm going to call the actual helper function, uh, backtracking function uh, that is going to do the weight lifting, uh, the job. How do we do that? Well, I want to pass uh, a specific value, which is uh, represented by this arrow and another value, which is again another index which is bits okay so let's say for the sake of argument initially i'm gonna have bin four so i will have one two three four and five of course because this is zero based so i will have this arrow that is gonna point to the element in position zero in my array that i will call index and the last one is going to be the actual bits okay so basically I have two indents, if you see, right? I have uh, one which is bits, which is gonna point to the uh, final element, right? Of my specific substring in my array. And our one which is index that is gonna start at zero from the first one. Okay, let's write the code. Maybe it's gonna be easier to understand what I'm doing. I call backtracking. And as an input, I pass the actual uh, string S, then I pass zero which is this index here that points to the position zero in my string and bits, which is indeed the final index. So let's do that. Okay, this is the actual important thing to implement. Okay, let's implement the backtrack, which is basically an output function from my bin. So backtrack char star s int index int bits. Okay, every time I do recursion backtracking, I have to think, when is this madness going to end? Okay, because at the end of the day, recursion is a fancy loop. So the end, the end for me is when index is exactly in position bits. So when we manage to reach this specific function call, function clone in the stack, right? When you do recursion, you have uh, the stack that is going to grow with the actual functions calling one each other. You have an army of clones of this specific function. So when index is equal to bits, okay, at this point, so I do, if index is equal to bits, well, you simply print uh, the actual pattern that has to be done. So here I need uh, a sentinel value backslash zero, because when I call the printf, the function needs the sentinel value. So very simply, what do I do? I initialize here in the calling function with all zeros like that. Easy, done. Okay, now it's time for the actual backtracking. So let's write better. 
like that. Here I have all the functions in my calling stack, which are not the last one, which are not when index is equal to bits. So I have this specific call, this specific call, and so on, right? until we reach the final one. Now, one simple gimmick that I used, that I explained in my previous videos when I do recursion is to only mm, pay attention only to the call just before the base case, namely this one in our specific example when we have only four bits, okay? So what needs to happen in this specific slot, in this specific uh, space in the array, given that the task of the base case is only to print the actual pattern configuration. You put a zero in your specific index, right? So you say as in position index is equal to the char zero, right? And then you print, okay? You just print that. How do you print this? Well, you call the base case. So you call yourself again as index plus one, right? And bits are the same. Remember, I assume I am this one. So I assume I am index three in my mind. So I put the zero, I print, then what do I do? I copy this and I put a one and I print again, zero one. Okay, let's try to run the code. So I compile and launch. And as you can see, I get all the binaries. This is the magic with backtracking. Of course, uh, here, if I change uh, four to eight to get one byte, this is gonna work as well. And if I change this to 64, compile and launch. And as you can see, everything still works. I have all the backtracking magic that is taking care of uh, writing all the patterns, very simply. You understand very well that it's silly to write the same piece of code twice. So what do you do? You simply do for loop. You do for and i equal zero, i minor than uh, one. Okay, here you just change to the actual value to a char, minor equal, and then you increase i. What do you do? You put i here, and then you backtrack it, like that. Here it comes, we compile and launch, and as you can see, we get exactly the same thing, but now we are using a for loop. So long story short, this is the algorithm to write all the binary configuration of 64 bits, okay? Now, you understand very well that you can change this um, one to a nine, right? What is going on if I change the code in this way? Compile. I launch and I get the actual numbers, you see. I get all the numbers on a decimal uh, base. So this is actually the um, code that is gonna create all the patterns that we need in our specific exercise. Again, if you have any trouble to understand this piece of code, I prompt you to watch my previous video in which I go much more in depth about this, because this can be tricky. Basically, we have a loop with inside a recursive code. Tricky, right? Okay, let's implement now the combination function. So, comb n, um, let's do a for loop. So, for int i equal, here we have the input that has to be greater than zero. So, let's do, let's also try zero. So, i minor than 10 plus plus i. Okay, same logic as before. We need all the possible combinations. So, void comb n int n. So, we're gonna create the, the buffer. So, we're gonna do char s with uh, 10 elements right because from 1 to 9 included 9 plus the sentinel final uh, so i initialize everything with zero and then we call the helper function again to do the backtracking so bt backtracking uh s zero the index and the numbers and then figures that i want so n like before the pattern is exactly the same so void backtracking we have char star s int index int n this is gonna end when um, index again is equal to n like before so in this case we print the actual combination percent s new line s done so this is the actual base case else what do we do else we need to put um the actual value in our cell but um in ascending order we want so what shall we do well here we can do a very simple trick um basically if you do man ask him you will see that the char just before the zero which is 48 is the forward slash 
here, which has the value 47. So here we can do something like this. I increase here by one. At, and as the first char, I put a forward slash. So I do this this time like that. And I pass the array plus one in my backtracking. So basically here, what I'm really passing, when I pass S, I'm not passing a pointer to here, but a pointer to here, okay? In this fashion. Now I explain you why. Here, what do I do? In every cell of my array, and here at this point, my array is only this one, right? I don't have the forward slash. I have to put all the charts, right? From uh, zero to nine, but not exactly. So now here, how can I leverage this forward slash here that I don't see, right? The array that the function sees is this one, but behind the scenes, you know that there is a forward slash with the value 47. Well, I can say, hey, every one of you of the clones, you have to put in your specific uh, index a value, which is just one more than the one in the previous cell. So I do for S in position index, I assign what? S in position index minus one, plus one. You see the catch? Let's write it more concise in this fashion. The upper limit is when S in position index is minor or equal than nine, which is the upper limit, right? And then I simply increase S in position index plus plus. Okay. Same logic as before. I will call the backtracking, passing the string, index plus one, and N, like that. And boom, we are done. Okay, let's try to run a combination five. Let's see, what do we get? Compile, launch, and as you can see, I get my pattern. Let's do combo, I don't know, three, zero, one, two, three, four, five, nine, uh, zero, two, three. Essentially like this. The thing is that we want the comma and the space, okay? So here in the print base case, I have to check if this is the last configuration or not. Now to understand if this is the last configuration is pretty easy because here we get seven, eight, nine. And what is this configuration? Well, is when S in position zero, the first digit is equal to 10 minus the digits, you see, seven. Because after that it is impossible. I cannot have eight, nine in this first position. Uh, by the constraints of the actual uh, um, numbers, I can have maximum this seven here when I have three digits. So it's 10 minus the actual n. So I do an auxiliary function here. Uh, int is the last comb and we take a char and the number of digits and I have to return. So if this char, okay, seven, so C, let's reduce this to an actual integer. So minus zero is equal to what is equal to 10 minus N like that. So in our specific case here, we have seven, eight, nine. So seven minus uh, zero is going to be exactly seven. All right. The number seven, the integer seven is equal to 10 minus N, which is three, right? In our specific case, so seven. So this is going to return me true. And I know that this is my last configuration. Okay. Let's use this one. And I do a ternary. I say is last comp char C is going to be S in position zero n okay question mark because if it is the last comba i want you to print just a new line on the contrary you print a colon a comma and a space like that let's try to run again the code let's launch here of course i have to remove this new line like that let's try again and boom we are done you can also maybe put a point here like that let's try again and here we are. You have your combination. And uh, let's do for all. Okay, I just want to line. Let's try again. Here it comes. Here I have all the combinations. Okay, let's change this to I. Compile, launch. And here we are. Here we get all the combinations which seem legit. Of course, I have to do a preliminary check here. So if and major than zero and and minor. Than 10 or better if and 
memory call zero, or you simply return. Okay, let's do that. Boom. Okay, so this is the solution for the problem. I think it's pretty short and sweet. And yeah, thank you for watching.